Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And I have to say I'm feeling particularly hungry today. Um, probably it's because of the title. And uh, <laughs> in full disclosure, like I, I was explaining to Kim, I've never had banana bread before. Um, although I've presumably missed my boat because that was so 2020. <laughs> so Kim, Kim, I'm excited, I'm excited. Tell me your story of what's been happening at Fourth Valley College. Thank you very much, Kenji, and uh, thanks everybody for uh, tuning into this, which I hope is is interesting, um, and you maybe find a couple of wee bits of it amusing as we go along, um, and also maybe a wee bit of food for thought. Um, it may as well, it might also just kind of trigger a conversation at the end of this, but it's a, yeah, this is what we've been doing and a wee bit of sharing um, of ideas. Um, in true housekeeping style, um, on these things now, I apologise in advance if my dog starts barking because I think the postman is due anytime soon. So I do apologise for that. Um, so without further ado, I will start sharing my uh, screen with you and um, and here we go. Uh, oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, so welcome to this webinar on Banana Bread is So 2020. Now, you'll be wondering why the reason is behind this name. It's because in 2020, I think it will forever be known as the year when everybody learned how to bake, everybody learned how to sew, everybody learned how to do yoga, because it was just the year of being indoors where we had to actually push ourselves uh, to learn all these new things to keep ourselves sane. So in full disclosure, um, I don't know if anybody um, is familiar with the person uh, Jasmine Hodge, who worked at Fourth Valley College and has now moved sadly to pastures new, but this image here is her attempt at a banana loaf. And as you can see, Kenji, what I would say is please do not be tempted with that one because it did turn out kind of rather uh, black at the top. However, she did say that it was very, very uh, nice to taste. So this webinar is going to take you through the journey from uh, Fourth Valley College where we kind of started when lockdown happened, um, the things that we, we came up against, which are probably similar to everybody else, but this is how we, we approached it, um, our hopes, our expectations and moving forward and uh, how the reality was maybe slightly different. So it started in March, 2020, and everybody can remember the rush to the shops to buy your toilet rolls because everything was just flying off the shelves at that point. From a staff point of view, it was a big culture shock because you're that used to just speaking to the students face to face, dealing with all their issues and everything, um, you know, when you've got them in front of you, when they're in the college. So I don't know what it was like for other establishments, but we were basically told one Thursday morning, right, we're locking down, we're closing down, and we had to be out of the building by lunchtime. It was as quick as that. It really was just up sticks and out the door. So the initial um, things that the staff had to do was we had to look at how are we going to get all these classes moved online, but also how we're we going to take all these support services, all the support services where the staff are used to, as I said, dealing with the students on a face-to-face -face basis, how are we going to get them um, online? And so what we looked at as a platform to use, we were just kind of bringing it in at this point, but was Microsoft Teams, which was new to everybody. It was new to the staff and it was new to the students. And normally when a new platform is brought in, you're given time to play around with it and build it up and find out how it works. Nothing like that. It was, a, it was immediate. We had to just go for it um, and get everything uh, set up. The learning teams, a digital support team, really, really kicked into a uh, touch at that point really, really quickly by putting up loads of different training sessions, basic training sessions. And that was really, really key in order to help us to learn what we needed to learn very, very quickly. The turnaround in that was probably within just about a couple of weeks, to be perfectly honest. It was really, really fast to put a whole training programme together. Identifying where there was a lack of IT and and or online connectivity. That was a big thing as well. Something that we had never really thought about. There's a lot of staff who maybe didn't have PCs or suitable PCs uh, at home. So 
which had um, a cam, a webcam um, or a mic in order to be able to communicate with the students. So we had to do a big um, process there of feeling, feeling, find out where all the gaps were in it. Finding places to study or work, that was a big one. My husband works at Fort Valley College as well. So we had to create two offices in the house along with two kids, um, which was difficult, very, very difficult. So we had to say, like, where, where are you going to work today? Where am I going to work today? And then we had to make sure that there was no interruptions because a lot of the work that you're doing can be very, very confidential. We also had to give staff the time to adjust as well um, because it wasn't just from a work um, angle, like everybody else was adapting to this new way of life, not being able to go out, not going to the shops as normal, not going to see your friends. And that had a huge big impact on the, the staff mental health um, as well. So for the students, what we really had to do for the students was deliver laptops. That was a mammoth undertaking because there were so many students who actually didn't have the online um, resources to be able to study like this. So and initially we delivered 350 laptops out to students. I know that some uh, other uh, colleges, there was a, a lot more, so they will appreciate the mammoth task um, that was. And even things like this, it was like getting teams in order to pick up the laptops, take them to students' houses, knock on the doors, and then we're having to take photographs of students with their laptops and everything, just to prove that they had a laptop, so that we had a, some sense of being able to track that and get them back in. Communicating with students and teaching them teams, so many students actually didn't know how to work teams. So that was, the, the departments really, really pulled out all the stops there and working with the students, taking them through how to work teams on a one-to-one -one basis in some, some situations where they were really, really struggling. Being mindful of the student's circumstances. I think one of the big things about um, the, the initial lockdown was the impact that it had on finding out the vulnerability of the student, seeing the vulnerability, because it really, really laid so much bare for us anyway. Um, we had to be mindful of the student circumstances or home circumstances. Um, a lot of students were um, in places where going online was maybe very, very difficult because of other siblings or they didn't have the resources. Um, their health, they were worrying, their mental health was really, really affected. Um, so we had to take that into consideration. And also their IT skills, um, the, the assumption that a lot of students, because they can work their phone and everything like that, they would be, they would be great with uh, the computer moving online really, really um, wasn't the case. And it was, and although I think we all know that, I think this COVID really, really highlighted that a bit more uh, for us. And again, it was about giving the students uh, the time to adjust for that. So the challenges then that we had uh, for the students, for the counselling and wellbeing. When you're working, with, when we were working with the students face to face, you had the normal indicators. The students would come to you, we would maybe notice a different change in behaviour. We would notice. Um, if somebody had maybe been in a fight or something like that, anything, there was just normal indicators that would say to you that there's something that we need to be concerned about here. Moving online, the indicators just changed drastically and this, all the staff needed to be more alert. Um, we had to be conscious of small cues and what they were saying with their um, in sentences that they were using. Um, maybe just different changes to the looks. The alertness that we had to have was, was extraordinary, really, to be perfectly honest. Um, there was also the safe space. And what I mean with that is that when there's a lot of students who, when they're, they're, they're going through a particularly tough time, they maybe don't want their families to know about this. And that was one of the big, uh, big issues as well, one of the big challenges is that they couldn't talk to us, they couldn't raise those, those things with us because they didn't have the privacy at home. They were getting interrupted, maybe their parents were coming in, a sibling was coming in, something like that. 
There was also the big thing as well, and this wasn't just about college and student staff, um, sorry, uh, college staff, and um, but the wider, the wider environment, I suppose, doctors, everything like that, all of a sudden the students were having their own private space, their own homes invaded. There was no longer that privacy within the home because we were actually entering into their home space. We were entering into their bedroom. We could see their lives laid bare. There was no privacy. And that had a huge, big effect on their, uh, their, their, their mental health and their general well-being. The safeguarding as well. Normally, all our safeguarding was done face-to-face. -face. Students would come into us. They would be referred to us. They would come in. Um, if if an email came in, we would still be able to maybe go and meet that student someplace on the campus, arrange to meet them. That changed. And all the external support services that we had contacts with, they changed as well. So for our safeguarding team, that was extremely challenging because all of a sudden, at the very start, students were getting sent to us for safeguarding issues and the team were going, what do I do with these students? Where do we send them to? because there was not the, the, the normal routes of referral had been taken away. We would normally, if a student had, um, maybe was, was talking about suicide, things like that, we would maybe make a GP appointment with them. And on times we went along and accompanied, accompanied them to go to the GP. That was taken out. We were having to rely on these students actually going to these GP appointments or up to the hospital on their own. And that was a really, that had a big impact on the staff as well, because we couldn't see a safe ending to that. We had to put a lot of trust in the student being able to follow that out. So there was an awful lot of additional work was brought in there. The quality of inclusion, there was a lot of learners who were struggling with the online learning, um, which meant a lot of more referrals were now coming through to our uh, learning development facilitators to do assessments because it hadn't been something that they had needed to really do um, in the past. So we've seen a big up, upturn in, in referrals there. And with all of this going on, we also seen a rise in the mental health support that was required, not counselling support. And I think that's been one of the big recognitions in this whole pandemic um, is the difference between the counselling support and the mental health support. And a lot of educational um, organisations have actually been finding this a challenge in dealing with the general mental health of students. And some of the causes for the mental health that students were coming to us uh, with was for isolation. There was also exacerbation of ongoing mental health issues. That was a big thing. We found that people were getting referred to a counselling service and when we were talking to them, they were saying, oh, I've already been diagnosed with this. And they were just struggling at this particular time. And that was challenging. And then, of course, they had the on course and the study issues. Again, not getting the face-to-face um, -face support from the, student, uh, from the lecturers really, really increased the mental health of the students in terms of their coursework, their study and their study issues. Um, is the course actually, am I going to get this qualification at the end of it? Um, is there going to be a job for me? What's the job market going to be like at the end of it? So there was loads of different worries that the students were coming to us that we had never really faced before. So the lovely picture of socialising there, everybody, those days when we could all get together and have a wee glass of wine together. What we thought was that in order to support the students fully, first thing that we had to think about as well was we had to get the, the staff into a strong place. We had to get the staff feeling a bit more supported so that if they were in a stronger supported place, then they could then transfer that to the students. Because if the staff are feeling vulnerable, then they're not going to be any help to the students um, at all. So what we did was, and this is behind the, um, the, the banana bread making, is we set up a social hub for staff. And within that, we created different uh, channels so that the staff could interact with anything that they wanted. They could keep in contact with their colleagues and they could do different activities. So we had 
the showstopper challenge, which is where the banana bread come from. We've made cakes, we've made um, uh, eclairs. Well, I was going to say we've made eclairs. No, we didn't. We tried to make chocolate eclairs, but I think every single person that turned out really, really bad. Uh, scones. I don't know how many staff have actually learned how to make scones now. Um, we had a quiz night and we had it set up so that all the families could join in as well. Um, and that was that was a big Teams challenge, Microsoft Teams challenge, setting up different breakout rooms and everything. Um, but that was a really, really good night. We've done escape rooms. We've managed to uh, pull together loads of escape rooms. So we've got a channel for that so that the staff can actually maybe just take five minutes out and go in and just do a wee escape room. Or they can do it with their kids if they want as well. We set up a channel, a channel activities for your kids, especially at the very, very beginning, because there was some uh, lecturers and support staff who were trying to work while they had young kids. So it was just to give extra resources um, there for them. And Zumba. Um, we had a member of staff who's a trained Zumba uh, teacher, and so she was running two Zumba classes uh, twice a week, every week. And uh, the amount of folk that was tuning into that was really, really good. So it was keeping us active as well, although it did mean us uh, starting work at eight o'clock in the morning, which for some was a bit kind of a turn off there. So when it came to supporting our students online, um, the student services department, so the learning advisory service, um, we had predominantly, and this is the area that I work, I should have actually said in my background, I'm the student advice coordinator at Fort Valley College, um, and I work within the wider equality, inclusion and learning services uh, department. So there's about uh, four coordinators, uh, in fact there's six coordinators that work within um, this area. And my area is a learning advisory service, the counselling and wellbeing service, and I've also got responsibility for the student association coordinator um, as well. So you can tell that my area does have an awful lot of interactions with, um, with the students and the pastoral care, the pastoral support. The learning advisory service had been Main, it always worked mainly with students coming in, booking appointments and seeing people face to face. All of a sudden, they had been forced to go online. And we've seen actually, and quite worrying, we've seen a dip in the amount of students who were actually reaching out to us. And that was a huge big concern to us because it was just wasn't the normal way. So we had to actually quickly reevaluate our service and say, how do we get the message out to the students to say, we are still here? You can still contact us and we're still here for support. The counselling and wellbeing service always just ran face-to-face -face appointments. All of a sudden, students who had been in the middle of sessions with their counsellor face-to-face were all of a sudden being told, no, you need to go online. That was a bit strange and a bit of a challenge for the, the counsellors as well because they had to draw up, and this was actually a big learning curve for us, they had to draw up different agreements with the students about being able to work um, on that online basis. And so we had to ba basically uh, really, really quickly develop a new online counselling service. Um, so that was huge. Quality and inclusion, um, the staff were available uh, from the first week of lockdown for all the students. Now they were actually at this point supporting about a third of the student population which for a team of about four or five is immense to be available. The workload was through the, through the roof, um, but they were want to be there for all the students who just to phone up and say, I'm struggling now, and then they would be able to help get the appropriate support in place. We had to move a lot of the work online, all their assessments, all the assessments that had actually been um, carried out, and all the recommendations that had been uh, set up for the student being face-to-face -face, had to be revisited by the students and we had to make all of them um, online as well. So I think, I think I'm, hope, I'm hoping that this goes to show that the amount of work that support staff and everything have had to actually undertake in order to support the students in this transitional move. And the assistive technology training Again, normally done face to face. It's a lot easier when it's done face to face, but we had to move online with that and do it in groups and individual, which did have a, an impact as well because there was a lot of students 
who find that type of learning really, really difficult. Um, and so the whole reason for them is to help make the students' learning easier, but they were finding that that was causing a wee bit of a barrier um, as well. Our learning resource centres, although we were in lockdown, they did remain open um, for some students who were really, really, really struggling and didn't have a safe space. Um, and so that was very few and far between for the students that would come in, but we had to at least keep some kind of safe space there. But mainly everything was online. Um, you had to really, really up the training for ebooks, journals, how to, book it, how to book them all out. For the student association, the first thing that they did was to move all their class reps online, all their engagement so that they could at least hear the student voice and all of this um, and that the class reps could feed back to the student association to say, yep, yeah, this is what's happening here. We've got a problem with this. So that was like a key area for us getting the student feedback. And thankfully, they were able to move all their gaming societies online. The gaming societies, um, they've got, we've got some of our own, but they also work in partnership with Stirling University. Uh, for some of the other uh, gaming societies um, that they've got. Um, and I think being able to move them online quickly allowed the students just to keep working together and keep that community, because that was a big thing that was broken with us. So that was us. We got through that year, and for the new academic session starting, we all entered in it with such hope. We were like, right, we're all going to be back on campus. We're all cheering there. The students are going to be milling about. It's going to be back to normal. Unfortunately, the reality was totally different. It was online. And even this online Zoom thing, that is a dream if everybody had their camera switched on. The reality in the classroom is that you probably only maybe get about one or two students with a camera switched on. So when you're trying to support people and teach people and it's just a blank screen, it is very, very difficult. But even that, the blank screens actually told a story for us. And it was about going back to where we said about those different indicators, that was an indicator for us. Where you started to wonder, why are they never switching the camera on? Is there something going on here? So that then got us thinking about the overall student support services and the counselling and wellbeing. We had to quickly move online, but for the new academic uh, session, we tried to change it slightly. We said, right, OK, this is the reality. This is what we're working with. It's going to be for the long term. So what can we do here? So we continue to be online for the counselling services, but we tried to bring in online wellbeing groups. Those were a wee bit of hit or miss. Um, it depended how um, trying to get an idea of what the students were actually looking to find out about was a bit of a challenge. But we've put on things like exam anxiety sessions. We've put on um, mindfulness sessions. They went down really, really well with the students. The Student Association, they increased their team's presence with adding more uh, tiles onto their team's area uh, to support the students through things like UCAS, um, care experience students, uh, young carers, um, any, any way, any kind of group that we thought was maybe vulnerable or a group of students who were needing a bit more support, a bit more direction, they created a tile for that. And then like everybody else, we had to move the freshers' fair and refreshers' fair online which was really, really weird because we were that used to the smell of popcorn, um, you know, having all these different external agencies coming in. Um, and you had, when the, when, the, when the campuses were open, you had a captive audience in a sense. The students would be milling about, they would be coming in and they would be finding things out maybe on chance that could be good for them going on. On your... your when things like this are online, you've got to take a bit of a punt, in a sense, um, because you're just hoping that the student might say, all oh, right, that's a wee bit interesting, I'm going to actually tap into that. 
So there's still a bit of work that we need to do with the online freshers and refreshers there, but I think for the first time doing it, the team done really, really well. The Learning Resource Centres, again, they're mainly online, but they're now delivering workshops on things like um, academic study, um, about referencing uh, how to write essays. So they're, they're bringing in some support workshops uh, like that now. The Quality and Inclusion uh, Services, again, they're still continuing to do uh, all the recommendations, but from an online perspective now. But what's really, really interesting, and this goes for the counselling service as well, is that our attendance for virtual appointments has actually went up. <laughs> um, I think this online um, appointment kind of manner is really suiting some students. We were actually quite surprised about that. And I think it's because it's, it's given more flexibility to when the students can actually attend an appointment. Where before we were maybe having to bolt it on to a time when they were in college at the end of a class, that they were maybe having to rush out to go and pick the kids up, or they were maybe having a shift at work or something like that. That's all been taken away. They can negotiate to us and say, right, actually, you know, this is a better time for me. Yep, that's fine. So I'll slot that in there. So I think even no matter where this goes in terms of the COVID, I think we're going to be retaining you know some of the the good um the good examples that's come from this and um, the good practice i should say uh, that's come from this like being able to be flexible with how we offer students uh, appointments the teaching departments as well so for the um, extended learning support learning development workers and core skills all the support areas they moved the drop-ins to be online so that we were still offering that service to the students um, there was tiles on Teams that was created uh, for every course, so it was easy for the students to navigate. They had they just went onto Teams and they had their, their unit code, well, the classroom, their course title. The course title, that would be there. And within that, all the different classes were in that one area. So they weren't they having to move about and get a wee bit confused or anything like that. That was actually good as well because it allowed um, a lot more transparency. So when we were doing support calls to the students, the student would be saying, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm engaging with everything. But we would actually be able to have an overview of their work and say, actually, you know, that's not really the reality. So what's going on here? Yeah, are struggling. So it did give us that, that chance to just have a more open and honest conversation with the student. And keeping fit. Now, this was, we've got this uh, terrific um gym coordinator called Wyman Lee, really, really excellent. And he created a channel um, of about 10 minute uh, keep fit exercises that he'd done in the garden. And he was just, and he had about is it, loads of different wee activities that you could do. And we were able to post them for the staff and the students so that they could just head out the back or even in the living room just do some keep fit. And it's all just about giving it as many options as possible there for the students to tap into. I'm conscious of the time and I'm just about finished, uh, Kenji. Um, the safety net here, um, I think I think this will go, I think everybody will probably um, understand this one. Um, we've got, there's three types of students that we deal with. You've got the students who are doing really, really well, they're engaging. If they're struggling a wee bit, they'll tell us, you know, we can just step in there. Then at the other end of the spectrum, we've got the students who we've already got um, knowledge of where they're struggling, they're, they're in our system, and so we can give that support. But then there's the ones in the middle where we really do need a safety net for, and that's the quiet ones who didn't tell us anything, they're just plodding along, they're getting on with it, and it's not until sometimes they reach crisis point that that's when they come to us, or that's when we say, whoa, wait a minute, something's, something's up here. So what we had to do for these group of students, as well as the, the, the other, all the other students, is we needed to create as many different ways of getting that support out to them as possible. So the last couple of slides is just what we've done. Our counselling and wellbeing service, they created um, this, and we're still building onto this. Um, any new issue that comes up, 
you know, we create a tile for it and so that the students can tap into this. When you go online and you Google um, any of these issues, it brings up so much information that it can become overwhelming for the students for to find out. And a lot of in a lot of areas as well, you have to sign up, uh, enter your details, register with these. So we wanted to create a bank of resources that the students would already be able to access without actually having to sign up. And so if they go into this area, they can just click on this and say, "Yep, I'm I'm dealing, I'm struggling with uh, my sleep at the moment. I'm not sleeping too well. In here, I've got some hints and tips on how to get better sleep." Um, we, there's also links to local groups um, that they can they can contact and also websites as well where they can go for, for help. The other thing that we thought was really, really important as well was bringing external agencies back into the college in a way that they can uh, support the students. So um, this is uh, this is my team's page and um, on here, you'll see SDS. So we've got all the SDS um, workers in the, the, that work with the college. They're in a group and we've got a lot of key staff so they can actually plan um, sessions as well and run them there. This time, mindfully, is our mindfulness sessions that we run. So the students can tap into that. We've, we've, we've brought in Who Cares Scotland and um, we're going to be running drop-ins with them. They're going to be running drop-ins for all the students that they can uh, touch base uh, with as well. So I think it's just really important that we, until we know exactly where we're going, it's creating as many resources, that was our key thing, creating as many resources as possible so that students could still get access to the services that they, they needed, that they relied on and that they worked with. So I've went three minutes over time, Kenji, I do apologize for that. But that is me. Banana bread is so 2020. What's what's served bacon for 2021? <laughs> that's, that's, that's 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 brilliant, Kim. I, I I really appreciate you taking us through that journey, and it and it has been a journey, and it's it, it's almost it's hard to imagine that it's been 12 months, and and oh. you know where we started and where we are now. But um, thanks for that. For those for those of you joining us um, on the on YouTube and watching the recording, um, I'm sorry you could be you couldn't partake of the banana bread experience. <laughs> but um, all that remains for me to say is just thanks, Kim. Thanks for sharing the story. Everyone who took the time here, and uh, hopefully at some point you'll be able to join us for a future live session. So until then, stay safe.